50 percent of black uh of black females over the age of 20 are obese <clears throat> and the cases of diabetes are increased by 70 percent over the past decade go to the next one We know that the real problem is abdominal adiposity, which is associated with increased risk of cardiovascular events. And we can see that as your waist circumference goes up, your risk of hypertension and all-cause death increases. So if a woman is over 35 uh, uh, inches, if a man is over 40 inches, that's a bad sign. Next slide. So visceral fat versus subcutaneous fat. It's the visceral fat, the fat that's in your abdomen that is around your organs that is dangerous and will kill you. We talk about two types of people. There are people shaped like a pear and people shaped like an apple. People shaped like a pear, although they may have a big booty and big thighs, are not so bad. But those who are shaped like an apple, round in the abdomen, are deigned to have a more a worse cardiac cardiovascular output. Next slide. So again, this just shows the relative risk of heart disease uh, as your waist uh, goes up in size. So we need to watch that. Next slide. So if you reduce your intra-abdominal fat, that improves your cardiometabolic risk factors. So what's that waist? Do sit-ups and whatnot. But let's go to introduce our guest speaker for today, Dr. James Jazzy Jordan. You can take the slides down some. Uh, he's a recipient of the 2000, uh, I'm sorry, I'm blocking my reading ability. Can somebody, can, Barbara, can you introduce him from your site? I don't have it. You have your site? Uh, uh, Dr. Walks? Give me one second, Dr. Maxey. I will, I have the slides here. I'm pulling them up. You know, Dr. Maxey, I've become so so dependent on you. Sometimes I forget that I'm your I'm your backup. I'm supposed to be able to do that. <laughs> so, and if right. I had the slides, I would have been happy to read it for you. But well, here here we go. Let me let me have the thank you for giving me the honor, Dr. Maxey. Dr. James Jazzy Jordan, recipient of the 2016 Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award from President Barack Obama. Dr. Jordan is a number one best-selling international author in multiple countries for the book, Health is Wealth, How to Live Without Cancer, High Blood Pressure, Diabetes, Obesity, and Heart Disease. Dr. Jordan was listed as one of the bosses of the decade by Jet Magazine, along with the likes of Barry Gordy, Kathy Hughes, Bob Johnson, Quincy Jones, and others. He has amassed over $2 billion in record sales cumulatively over the course of his stellar career, maximizing the operating performance of organizations. Hmm. He was also honored as an American icon by Representative Sheila Jackson Lee at the U.S. House of Representatives for his contribution and service to the music industry. Dr. Jordan is one of only two African-Americans to have ownership of a car entrant in, into the prestigious Indianapolis Indy 500 race. Dr. James Jazzy Jordan, we are honored to have you with us, sir. It's my pleasure. Thank you all for having me. So good afternoon, beautiful people. So great to see you. So good to be with you. And today is a perfect day to have this talk because the bottom line, you know, we just finished a great holiday here in America. We celebrate Thanksgiving. 
We put a spread on the table that's unbelievable. You know, uh, women and men cook for hours just to make sure that we have so much to eat and so much to digest. Now, Dr. Maxey did part of my presentation for me already, because talking about, you know, what happens with, with your body and when you don't really take care of your body, because we, in most cases, we're all given great, great instruments. These bodies of ours are, I, I think they're on loan. But unfortunately, we even know more about our cars than we do about our bodies. You know, your car, most cars now are smart cars. They tell you if your tire pressure is low. They tell you if you're, if you need to change your oil. They tell you when you're running out of gas. They tell you everything. But what do we really know about our bodies? And how much do we study our bodies? You know, I decided over 30 years ago to uh, eat only plants. No meat, no chicken, no steak, no any of that, no butter no milk, any of that. Now, I, I can speak from my experience because I'm not a medical doctor, but I want to speak from my experience of my 30 years. And, you know, and I think that time is one of the best teachers in life because if you live it, then you can really, you have something to say about it. And, you know, when I'm, I consider myself to be blessed because I don't have any pain at all. I don't wake up with headaches. I enjoy my food. I love my food. And, you know, here's the best thing about food. If you are a great cook, you can cook anything. Because the secret to cooking great food is really to understand how to spice up your food right, how to make it really taste good. If you ever go over anyone's home and the food is not that great, it's because they don't understand how to really put the right spices and that right love and touch into their food. And, you know, I, um, I, when I started this journey, I was like everybody else. Well, what am I going to eat? How am I going to survive? So I had to learn to cook food the way I wanted to taste food, because as people of color, we like our food a certain way. We don't like our food bland. We don't like our food with no taste. We want to make sure that our food is really, uh, that's what it has, great taste. So therefore, that's the first thing you have to have because we eat with our eyes. So the food has to look good. It has to taste great. And then you're going to enjoy it. So people often ask, so Thanksgiving's coming around. What are you going to have? Do you know, just about every side that you put on your table, I can have if it's prepared right, except for the turkey. So even at any feast, I mean, I can eat great. And, you know, this is a challenge only if you make it a challenge. And let me tell you why it's so important, because we need to help out our doctors. See, our doctors are there every day seeing patients. And, you know, when I would imagine when a patient walks into a doctor's office, the doctor is first thinking, mm, how could I get this per person really healthy without putting them on a ton of drugs? That's what your doctor's thinking. But you have to really decide that you want to have great health. I mean, I've worked with some of my clients to help them reduce their weight and re really regain their vitality again, because if you lose that excess weight around your midsection that Dr. Maxey was referring to, then before you know it, you realize that, you know what? My body is stronger than I thought it was because now I feel like exercising. I feel like going for a walk. And see, and it's, it's just that simple. When we start talking exercising, for example, we're not talking about, you don't have to go and try to be an Olympic uh, sprinter. You can just start by taking a walk around the block, a simple walk. And then you stretch it out to maybe a mile, a mile or two miles or three miles. And before you know it, your body starts responding the way you want it to respond. And then you start paying attention to your body and your body will tell you when there's something wrong, because I call it your inner doctor. We all have an inner doctor and our inner doctor will send us pain. 
Why do we have pain in our knees? Why do we have pain? Uh, why do we have headaches? Well, we have these headaches because we have a problem, but we tend to ignore it. And we think, okay, I'll be all right tomorrow, or I'll just take an aspirin. And you know, that's not the case. We need to really change the way we look at our food because our food, in my opinion, is really the number one uh, problem that we have. When you look at America, and I call America the sickest country in the world, because we are. Some of the statistics Dr. Maxa gave you, which is so very true, you know, for example, you know, when you look at cardiovascular disease, more people die from heart attacks and strokes and whatnot than anything else around the world, around the globe. And, you know, I thought that, okay, African-Americans, we have high blood pressure here in America. We have it bad. But do you realize that on the continent of Africa, the high blood pressure rate is higher than it is here in America? So I thought it was just a standard American diet. But in talking to some of my uh, friends in the medical community and learning that uh, sodium is really a problem for us, and we have to realize that and understand that, that's why it's so important to understand that eating whole foods is better than anything else. And okay, what's a whole food? You take an apple that you take off of tree. A that's snack. a whole food. That's a whole food. You know, so when you have when you have that apple, all you have to do is just bite in it because God's already cooked it for you. It's already cooked. It's already prepared. And now when you go to the store and you buy some of these or you go to a, a Burger King's, for example, and you get a. Um, you know, this new impossible Whopper they have that's vegan, that's plant based. You get that. You say, OK, I'm doing the right thing. But what you have to realize is that it has 1,200 milligrams of sodium in every, every sandwich. And that doesn't include the fries. That then in, include all the other ingredients you're going to get with that. So that's almost half of, or, or that's almost all the sodium that you should have per day if you are on a low sodium diet. And, you know, so we have to be very, very careful. And we have to understand that we can't eat like we used to. We can't eat like our uh, parents used to eat. We can't do that because we don't work like they used to work. Think about it. Now, when our parents or grandparents, maybe, that worked in, a, in the field, they worked all day. They sweated out. So whatever they ate, they sweated off. But not only that, you live on a farm. What do you do? You grow your own food for the most part. You have your animals and you're going to slaughter animals every now and again, but you're not eating animals three times a day like we do now. You know, you don't have a fat, you didn't have a fast food restaurant on every corner. So the difference is we cannot continue on like we're going because, you know, in order to help ourselves, we have to change our attitudes in our minds about food. We have to realize the importance of food. Food is really, food is vital. We have to have food. But at the same time, when you're eating things that are not really good for your body because your cholesterol is going up, your high blood pressure is going up. And again, how can plants help your high blood pressure? That's what I want to talk about. When you're consuming plants and you're controlling the amount of sodium that you're infusing in your salad or whatever it is you're eating, you're controlling it. And see, and the key to it is like having a salad. The key to it is making your own dressing, making a simple dressing, taking something like apple cider vinegar, a little uh, olive oil, and maybe uh, uh, apple cider vinegar, olive oil, and maybe maple syrup. And you make a simple dressing that's really good for you, that really tastes good, and you can really enjoy it. But when you go and you get these uh, Thousand Island uh, ranch dressing on all these dressings that you get these bottled dressings that have so much sodium that it really destroys the whole purpose of, of eating that salad. Or you take a baked potato. You have a baked potato, a regular potato, you bake it. It has about 800 calories, no, excuse me, 80 calories. 
you take that same potato and you cut it up and make French fries and you cook it in oil. Now it has 300 calories. So it all depends on how we look at our food and what we do with our food. And the bottom line is that, you know, if you don't have pain, if you don't have high blood pressure, if you're not overweight, then you're doing a great thing. But you know what? Most of us after a certain age, and that age is coming down, that age is getting uh, lower and lower as far as people with high blood pressure. And I know you doctors see this all the time. It's hard to to have a patient that's African-American that really does not have high blood pressure uh, after they get to be a certain age. And, you know, and that's kind of standard. If you don't have it, you're like one of the lucky ones. And also, if you don't have that belly fat, you're one of the lucky ones. And again, but it doesn't have to be that way. I, I can assure you of that. And how do I save you money by eating plants? Well, here's the best way to save money by eating plants and eating a great diet and drinking a lot of water. Yes, organic food costs more money than regular food. But if I can keep you off medications, do you know how much money you can save? Because do you realize that uh, uh, the average person is on six or seven prescription pills per day? So again, that gets to be very costly. And then don't have to uh, end up being pre-diabetic and then going from pre-diabetic to all of a sudden being on dialysis. And now you, uh, you, know, you have that treatment take place and you got the medication that comes, that comes with that. So again, you can save and change your life just by simply changing your mind and changing your diet. And the reason I say changing your mind is because you can't do anything unless you change your mind. Because if you want, you know, we, and let's face it, we love fried chicken. We love fried chicken. And that's just a fact. Now, am I saying don't eat fried chicken? Well, yes, I am. <laughs> because, uh, you know, to me, it's like, it's not really, really the best thing for your body. And that's what we have to do at this time. Because if you're, if you're over 40 years old, 50 years old, you've had a lot of fried chicken in your life. You may have had enough chicken already. So now you can start thinking about what will the last 10 years of my life look like? And what do I mean by that? You know, you could be on a, you could, you could have AIDS to get around, a cane. You could have oxygen tanks, or you could be healthy, and you could still be running marathons if you decide to do what? Understand and take care of your body and help out your doctor, because your doctor can prescribe anything, anything he or she wants, but it's not just about taking the medication. It's about taking responsibility for your body. And, you know, here's something else that please do this too. And this has nothing to do with the food you eat. But see, I, I make a journal about my health. So if I ever have to go see my health provider, I can talk to my health provider and give them information such as on this date, this occurred, on this date, this occurred, on this date, this occurred. Now my doctor has a better history of what's been going on with my body as opposed to your doctor sitting there and going, how do you feel? And you're like, I, I feel okay. But you're not giving your doctor the information your doctor needs. You know, and doctors, and I wasn't put in to defend doctors because I don't have to, but doctors get bad raps because, they, you know, people like to say, well, they only want to prescribe medication. Well, in some cases, that's all you'll do is take the medication if you do that. But again, what I'm saying, the plants, trust me. And the reason I wrote my book, Health is Wealth, is because I, you know, God told me to remind my people to take care of their temples, to take care of their bodies. Because, you know, think about it. The body is so incredible. You don't even have to think to blink. You don't have, you know, so many things your body will do for you automatically that you don't have to think about. And if you did have to think about it, you, you wouldn't have time to do anything else. So this body we have is incredible if we just 
stop stretching it out of shape. Stop putting things in it that your body really doesn't need and does not require. And, you know, here's the question that you get all the time when you become a vegan or vegetarian. And that is, where will I get my protein from? Can I get enough protein? And, you know, Dr. Campbell uh, has this book called The China Study, and he did a, a, a study of, of protein and, you know, the purpose of this protein. And he found that, number one, Americans are consuming too much protein, which is not good for us. OK, so we worry about things that we don't have to worry about. And the other crazy thing is that if you ask the average person, what is protein? The average person really have no idea what it is. And, you know, when you look at even I get my blood work done every six months just because I want to see what's going on in my body. And I have my doctor send me a copy of it. And I do my own research to look at my blood, uh, blood streaming uh, information and see what's really going on in my body as best I can. So I can only communicate professionally with my doctor so I know what's going on. So the bottom line is that it's not enough to change your diet. You have to change your lifestyle. You have to really become responsible for your body. Because remember this. It's not your doctor's body. It's your body. It's not your doctor's responsibility. It's your responsibility because it's your body. And your doctor can tell you anything um, that you uh, want them to know and to do. But guess what? The bottom line is that that's not the key. The key is you taking responsibility for your own body because the bottom line is really is really up to you. And again, why is it so important to eat fruit and vegetables? And what is the best way to get your fruit and vegetables? Well, the best, best way and the easiest way to make sure you're getting enough is really uh, through juicing. Okay. Now, the only problem I have with juicing is this. When you juice, you take all the fiber out of the food and your body still needs fiber because that helps, you know, help your digestive system, help the food go through your body and slide through your body. Right. And, you know, the bottom line is um, we just need to understand the purpose of, of, of food and the purpose of, you know, and the way our bodies work, because the reason I say that is because when you have a situation of you eat out of habit and out of tradition, we eat what we think is good for us, but are we eating what's best for us? And can you make any, almost anything taste good? I say, yes. I mean, again, like I said, I've had gentlemen that I've had one gentleman lost 80 pounds in five months in a healthy way. All right. And trust me, he had the weight to lose. He needed to, to lose this weight. You know, I had a slide presentation to uh, present to you, but I really don't want to do that because I really wanted to really talk to you. And what I really love to do is answer any questions that, you know, may, you may have uh, that I can answer that I've in, encountered in my 30 some odd years of, of not eating any animal flesh or not consuming any animal flesh, because the bottom line is this, you know, uh, I can give you statistics. I can give you slides, but what I really want to do is give you the truth. And what I love to do more than anything else is, uh, in, in, in Dr. Maxey's right. We've had some knockdown, drag out conversations about about you know <laughs> about this food because obviously I have my viewpoints and and he as a learned professional and a great doctor certainly has his viewpoints and you know what and the great part about it is that only thing we ever want to do is make you better. So I'm going to at this point stop talking. And, um, you know, I'll turn it back over to Dr. Maxey, but I would love to answer or take any questions that you might have, because the bottom line is that, you know, let food be thy doctor. Let food help you 
But, you know, always check in with your doctor. Dr. Maxey? You're you on mute, mute, Dr. Maxey? I was there saying thank you so much, Dr. Jordan, for being with us and giving us this information. And we've got a few questions from our co-moderators. But sometime before you leave, I want you to give that recipe for those uh, mushroom barbecue ribs. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and that's another thing, too. I mean, um, and you can actually you can read my book for free online at, right at Amazon. But it, it, you don't it, have to it, it right now. But no, no, uh, no, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just going to say, but it has a ton of recipes in there as well. But I'm open for any questions. Okay. Dr. Walsh, that's the neighbor. We have a question um, in the chat uh, asking Dr. Jordan, any thoughts about intermittent fasting? Yes, yes. I live my life that way. I do not have my first meal until after 12 noon. I eat my first meal then, and I eat my final meal by six or seven o'clock in the evening. So that gives my body all those other hours to really rest. So I have about 18 hours of non-eating. And what that does for me is that that allows my body really to clean itself out. And, you know, and anytime you're going to do anything for your body, the first thing you should really do is detox your body because, you know, we consume so much food and so many things stay in our gut for far too long. So the best way to get it out is to detox that body. Intermittent fasting is a brilliant way to go. Oh, Dr. Jordan, first of all, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I will stop being being mad at my at my sister who doesn't eat any <laughs> animal products and nothing, nothing that had a face or a mom. Right. Uh, so, so here, here, here is is one of the challenges because you you talked about lifestyle, not only diet, and right. um, what I found myself is that everything is related, right? So if if I for the last couple of months I've been recovering from a, a back injury, and what I found is that if I can't get up and move around, it wreaks havoc on everything else. And yes. so I just want to wonder if you can talk a little bit about the importance of mixing that diet with the lifestyle that you mentioned earlier. Oh, absolutely. And that's, you know, again, we have to move our bodies. And that old saying, move it or lose it, is so very true. When you all of a sudden you don't, you're you're uh, not mobile, you don't move around, then that's when you really create a problem for yourself because then the food really sits there. You eat your food and, you know, you're not helping your body digest that food. You're not you're not using your muscles. And again, you don't have to even join a gym. You can walk, you can run, you can you can dance. You can put some music on and dance in your house and and have a good old time. Dance like dance like ain't nobody looking, you know, and sing and everything else. Do whatever you want to do. Grab a neighbor, grab a friend, go for a walk you know, go to the park and walk and walk and walk. And, you know, it's so very simple, but we have to move our bodies. We have to use our bodies or else I got news for you. The bodies just stop working. And, you know, the bodies are like, oh, well, you're not going to do anything. I'm just, oh, I'm not going to do anything. So, so Dr. Jordan, we, we talked a little bit last week about some of the challenges in getting people to do things that are good for them. Um, right. Even just, you know, going to see the doctor once a year for uh, most of us men, it, you know, you would you would think we were asked to, to, to do something that was impossible. How, right. how 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 did you since 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 we got you, how did you 30 years ago decide, you know what, that's it. I'm done with the ribs and the fried chicken. I'm done with those steaks. How how do you motivate yourself and how do we motivate others that? I won't say do away with everything day one, but how do we motivate folks to care about the fact that what they eat matters? Well, you know, the way I the way I talk to people is this, loving yourself. How much do you love yourself? If you love yourself enough, I would hope you would do something that's going to be beneficial and helpful to you. And, you know, and it's not only about you because it's about the whole family. 
You see, because when you take care of yourself, then somebody else doesn't have to take care of you. Mm. Okay. Because then you can take care of yourself. So again, for me, it was really, it was easy. I just changed my mind. Okay. And that's the whole, the whole key. It's not about changing your diet. It's not about changing that. It's about changing your mind. It's about realizing what's good for you. Because I was in New York City at the time. I was working um, at a record company. I was working with Salt and Pepper and other artists like that and going out to all these functions, eating late at night and, you know, taking people out and have this big old steak dinner and stuff like that. And the next day I would feel so tired and sluggish from drinking, from eating this food that was, you know, staying in my body too long. And then I said, well, actually, I'll tell you the truth. And if you read my book, you'll know it anyway. I met this woman and she was a vegetarian. Okay, <laughs> And I was like, wow. And so, you know, I, I was like, okay, tell me more. And so, you know, I, I, I tried it out and I felt so good. And you see, and that's the thing about it. You know, it takes 28 days to change a habit. So here's what I'd say to anyone that really want to do something for yourself. If you're in, like I said, if you're in any kind of pain, if you have high blood pressure, if you have high cholesterol, try this for 28 days. Change your diet. Okay. Change your diet. Do some exercise for 28 days and see how you feel. If you feel better, then you stick with it. If you, you know, I mean, because that's what it's all about. It's about feeling good. It's about being able to walk up and down stairs without being out of breath. It's being able to run if you have to, because, you know, the times we're living in, you never know when you might have to run, you know? <laughs> so again, that's what it is to me. It's really about being prepared for what comes next. And, you know, and when you learn to, here's the beautiful, beautiful thing about honestly, not uh, when you change your lifestyle. You learn that there's so much more food in life. You learn, you learn how to really prepare, you know, really, really great food. And you learn and see, and your 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 taste buds even change. So so when you have that tomato out of your garden, and all of a sudden that made a tomato tastes so sweet. And now all of you, anybody that came came up in the South, and your parents may have had a garden. And you remember getting that tomato or getting watermelon and stuff out there and how sweet it used to taste, how good it used to taste. And, you know, now you buy stuff in the grocery store and the taste doesn't even compare. Part of that is also you and your taste buds not being as active as they used to be because we, we've dulled our taste buds with all the junk that we, we consume. And everything has to be, you know, double fried, not single fried, double fried. And then, you know, you're, you're going to slather it with a, a, a lot of condiments. And now before you know it, you can't even taste what you're eating. Let me raise a question, Dr. Jordan. Sure. In doing some research prior to you coming on, I was reading about dairy. And I know that dairy is something that increases inflammation in the body, increases mucus formation in the body. And cheese is a dairy product that increases that inflammation. And I understand also that some of the causes of endometriosis in women is related to intake of dairy products. And can you comment on some of that? Absolutely. You know, first of all, let me just tell you, we have been lied to so much about you know, the food pyramid in the first place that we're supposed to be eating. All right. And dairy is one of those uh, uh, things that we've really been lied to because think about it. Nothing else on this, nothing else in this world consumes, you know, milk or baby milk. You know, any of the mammals that you look at, they don't consume any milk after, after, after they're weaned off that bottle, except for human beings. We continue to take that milk in. We continue to take that cheese in. And not only that, it helps to clog up your arteries. It does a great job at doing that. And again, it's not 
is really, it's not really, really healthy for you. And it's not great. You can take a plant milk and, you know, make it substitute any kind of milk that you're, that you're used to, uh, or, or used to have such as almond milk, such as oat milk. There's plenty of, of plant milks that are really, really uh, perfect for whatever you want. If you want to use them in your cereal, which I don't recommend eating that much cereal in the first place, because sh- cereal is what? It's mainly sugar. And, you know, that's the other killer that we consume far too much of. The yeah, thing I, I read something that sugar is more addictive than cocaine. Preach, brother. They did a, they did a, 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 um, an experiment with rats where they gave the rats an opportunity to get either cocaine or get sugar. So the rats would go and get the sugar and not the cocaine. Now, what they did was they electrified uh, the item where the, the, the dispensary that was going to dispense the sugar. The rats would still rather get electrified than go for cocaine because they wanted that sugar. It gives you such a high. That's why, that's why honestly, these uh, 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 drinks such as, uh, you know, these uh, s- sodas, all these sugary drinks, are just not good for you because they spike your blood sugar. And now all of a sudden you're on a high and then next thing you know, you're, you're at a low. And, and that's, and this is a, this is what I'm saying about learning your body and learning what, what, what your your body really needs, because we, you know, water is the greatest thing that ever. Without losing job. Is there anything in the chat that's for, a neighbor Seaman? Yes, there's a question about um Dr. Jordan, what is your opinion about fake meat? Well, my opinion is that I'm guilty. <laughs> when I say I'm guilty, meaning that, you know, it's hard to honestly to just never, never have, you know, anything that looks like meat. And I didn't stop eating meat because, you know. I stopped eating meat because I thought it was not good for me, but I still like, I still like uh, some fake meats and beyond, beyond meat, for example, they make a great, great product. They make a great burger. But I tell you, the problem is that it's a processed food and we have to realize that. And so therefore we have to do it in very limited terms. Every, every time you cook a meal, you should not have a fake meat on your plate. Uh, because again, you're still getting too much sodium and you're getting chemicals that your body really does not need. And the other problem I have with anything that you're consuming, anything you don't know what it is, I don't think you should be eating it, personally. I like that. So I'd like to hear a couple of your quick recipes before we let you go back to Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> yes. Okay. So let's let's talk. See, I take now, mushrooms. That's the neighbor that's a cook. She. I'm gonna go to raid her house and come and get something to eat soon. All right. Okay. Uh, I take like a portobello mushroom cap, and I can take that portobello mushroom cap, and I can make um, a steak out of it. I can make uh, what I would call ribs out of it. And the easy recipe for for uh, making ribs is that you take the cap of the portobello mushroom and you cut it into slices about maybe a quarter of an inch thick. And what you do is you're gonna, you're gonna fry it, but you're gonna use very little oil. And you need a really hot pan to do this. So, you uh, make sure your pan is hot. And the best way to, to test the pan to make sure it's hot is just take a little water, throw it in there. And if the water sizzles just right, you know your pan is hot. Now you take your your uh, mushrooms and you cook them on one side for two or three minutes, flip them over two or three minutes. Now you take your favorite um, barbecue sauce and you just slather them with barbecue. And again, if you have mushrooms, one one reason that mushrooms is such a treat for um, vegetarians and vegans 
because it is a really, really great meat replacement. That's also very healthy for you because the bottom line is that, you know, it kind of gives you that mouth taste of having meat, but, and you know, obviously, you know, it's not meat. And, you know, and I'm never going to tell anybody that anything tastes like chicken, but chicken. I'm not going to tell anything that I tell anybody that anything tastes like bacon, but bacon. OK, I'm not ever going to go there because uh, and again, I'm not even really one one good for uh, being able to test that out because it's been over 30 years since I've had the real thing. So <laughs> I don't know. But I just know that uh, I would not say that, you know, fake anything is going to be just like the real thing. And not only that, you have to do what's really right for you. So um so that's that's an easy rib or steak. Um, oh, here's a, here's another a good recipe. Taking the cauliflower, right? And I didn't know cauliflower was so versatile until I really, you know, got on this journey. And you can take cauliflower and you can cut it up again. Take the head of cauliflower and you cut it up into what I would call steaks. And you and you make them about eh, no more than a quarter of an inch to maybe a half an inch thick. And you're going to cut it up into uh, slices of of like what I would call a steak, but you know, steak, but you know what a cauliflower head looks like. And you take that and also you you pan, you pan fry it or you put it in the oven and just bake it if you want. And now when you, you take it out, you spice it up just like you would a steak. And that's considered a cauliflower steak. So it's other ways to get your sensation uh, or uh, satisfy your your taste needs for, uh, let's say, steak or anything else by using the, excuse me, the right spices. It's so very simple. But here's the best way to start your day. If you before you get to your intermittent fast days, if you want to start your day with a nice green drink, that's one of the best things you can do, because now. Instead of making a smoothie, because most of us don't have time to make smoothies or clean up afterwards, you can just take uh, like a few leaves of of kale or lettuce or whatever it is you want that's green. Put it in a blender. You put uh, your plant based milk in there, and uh, then you just add. Well, I you know if you want to use a protein powder, you can use protein powder. You mix that up. And that's going to really help you get what you need to really get your body jump started for that day. And here's another little simple, simple, but uh, elegant uh, thing you can do. And that is apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is really, you know, my go to if I need a pick me up because I can just take apple cider vinegar, take. Uh, and first of all, when you first start with apple cider vinegar, start with small doses. So maybe start with a teaspoon. And then you can work your way up to a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and maybe into eight ounces of water. Just stir it up, drink it down. And that to me is a nice little pick me up. If I'm going for a long car ride, if I have to be in a car for a long time, I will make uh, maybe uh, not mm, just 16 ounces of that and take it with me and drink and sip on that as, as I go, because uh, my body is, uh, such now that that really helps recharge my body, recharge my battery, something really simple like that. That's really good for me. So there are tons of tons of recipes and things you can do. And again, smoothies are really, really uh, great as a meal replacement because you can get your fruits, you get your vegetables, you get everything right there in one in one bang. Well, thank you so much. Doctor. Can you put the name of your book and how people can get it into the chat? Oh, absolutely. Sure. And, uh, absolutely. And uh, I sure appreciate you joining us today. Uh, so any so, so, so uh, hold on, uh, Dr. Maxey. We have some questions in the chat and Dr. Sherrod has her, her hand up. So I, okay. I think Dr. Dr. Jordan might have a little bit more uh, work to do. Hey, okay. hey, we got time. We got time. Let's do it. Uh, thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Jordan, for such a uh, great presentation. My question is concerning high fructose corn syrup mm -hmm. and um, its detrimental effects. And I know that it's a recent, uh, maybe within the past 20 years on the market, it's cheaper, sweeter, absorbed more rapidly by the body, and it goes directly to the liver. 
And actually it's believed to be the number one cause of liver transplants now in the United States. Not only does it cause type two diabetes, but it also causes high blood pressure. And I was just wondering what your experience has been uh, with that, because at one time it was in everything like ice cream, yogurt, and, and I do believe that uh, we should read every label that, of processed foods that we take into our bodies. And if you really can't pronounce the words, you shouldn't eat, you shouldn't eat That's that. That's right. That's right. But, uh, I know it's a major and I wanted to commend you on the uh, title of your book because at one time I gave a lecture called Health is Wealth. Are you making your deposits? <laughs> I like that. I'm borrowing that. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you know, listen, sugar is everywhere. And, you know, and these companies are really clever. They hire marketing people. They have high, higher staffs just to figure out two things. How can I get you addicted? Right. And they, they know what is going to addict you more than anything else. Just like we talked about it. Sugar. So sugar is everywhere. But they changed the name of it. OK, so. Nobody knew what high fructose corn syrup was. You just see it there and you're like, okay, it's high fructose corn syrup. I don't know what it is, but it tastes good. So I'm going to have it. That's why my sweetener of choice is maple syrup. Okay. And you have to use that. You don't have to use a little, just a little tad of it. So, and as you back off your body, really, and especially for anyone that's pre-diabetic, and I, I certainly don't have to tell you guys this, you already know it. Please, if you're pre-diabetic, then really start thinking about what you're consuming and making sure that you read every label, not once, not twice, three times. And guess what? Use the internet. The internet, Google is our best friend. Google things. If you don't know what it means, look it up. And when you go to your doctor, make your doctor work as your doctor. And if your doctor does not know, your doctor should find out because it's not only good for you, it's going to be good for the whole practice. So again, we have to do that. We have to, and it's, again, I can't, I can't say this enough. Your doctor is your best friend, but your doctor can't do the work for you. You have to do, you have to bring in, you have to bring in the information and ask the questions, ask the right questions and you'll get the answers. Mm -hmm. Dr. Walks, you said somebody else had their hand up. Uh, we have a couple of questions in the in the chat, Dr. Dr. Maxey. Um, uh, Dr. Dr. Gibson uh, wanted to know about um, soy based products and if soy based products are particularly um, good or bad where men are concerned. And then um, olive oil versus other oils, which is the best oil when we're going to fry up that portobello mushroom and make those ribs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I Amazing, love it. By the way, they, those are good. Those are really good. Go ahead. Yeah. Dad. <laughs> so uh, the best oil for me is really uh, grapeseed oil because it has, has a very high burn point. Okay. And um, actually, to be honest with you, technically with you, all oils are bad for you. So you should really try to eliminate as much oil as you can, especially if you have any heart problems at all. You should really stay away from oil because oil is just empty calories, okay, mm -hmm. that your body really does not need. You can saute your vegetables right in water and they'll be j just fine. And most oil really, really does not really give your food any taste at all. It's going to rely on your seasoning. So... um. You know, just try to eliminate all the oil you can. If I, like I said, if I'm going to use any oil at all, now I will use olive oil if I'm just making a salad. I just use it there, just use a limit, a, a little bit of it. And what you want to do is make sure that you're not overdoing it with their oils because your oils really, um, they're not necessary. And, you know, and what was the other question, sir? Uh, soy, soy based products so, and any yes. particular impact on men. Well, you know, it's many studies, and this is one of um, one of the, <laughs> the topics that Dr. Maxey and I have had much debate about because um, he, well, at the time anyway, was uh, under the impression, and I don't disagree with him, that soy was not the best thing for you. And I would agree with that. 
Um, and, you know, but see, soy, when it's in its natural state, when it's a soy bean, then it's okay. But it's what is done to it when it's made into a soy product that we buy in the stores. So, I mean, to me, I would say if you're going to use it, use it in a very, very limited amount and don't use it that often. But, you know, there's um, you can go to um, Japanese use soy all the time. And it doesn't really seem to have a problem for them, but they they eat differently than we do. Because number one, see, for their dinner, they'll have a bowl of soup where we'll have a big plate of food. So again, it's all about, you know, uh, see, I try to eat my biggest meal of the day when I eat my first meal, which is that meal from 12 to 1, somewhere in that neighborhood neighborhood. That's when I'm going to eat my largest meal. And the reason I eat the largest meal then is because now I have all day to move around to get this uh, food out of my body and work its way out. Because again, I'm going to try to eat something that's going to go through my body quickly in the first place. So soy is not highly recommended. And, you know, I would stay away from it as much as I, as much as I can. Thank you. So uh, Dr. Dr. Cutter had, um, a uh, couple of questions, Dr. Maxey. Um, questions about, uh, uh, first of all, great comments related to your great presentation, Dr. Jordan. And Thank then you. Dr. Cutter wanted to, to hear about um, strategies that you have found helpful to having people learning more about reading food labels, becoming aware of emotional eating, and uh, cleaning up your kitchen. I think that means getting all the bad <laughs> devil food out of the kitchen. <laughs> you want right. to here for a minute, Dr. Walks? Um, Dr. Where do I? Uh, uh, Dr. Cutter? I don't see Dr. Cutter's name. She's on. She's on? Okay. Oh, there she is. Okay, I'm sorry. The big, the big C. If it was any bigger, I would really not be able to see it. Can we unmute Dr. Cutter? Good morning or good afternoon. You guys always catch me by surprise by asking me to speak. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I really appreciate uh, Mr. Jordan's comments. You know, I actually interviewed him about three or four years ago on a podcast or something that we taped at uh, public television. And yes. he was kind enough to give me a copy of his book and I read it with rapt attention. And I just felt that, you know, this kind of information coming from a lay person is so valuable because it really proves that you don't have to be a physician. You don't have to be a scientist. You don't have to study for years and years to take care of yourself. So I just wanted him to kind of elaborate more on that part of the journey, because I think many people really understand intellectually that it's good to make these changes, right? Like, the, you know, this, all of this sounds good, the recipes and everything, but it's really overcoming these hurdles, these emotional hurdles, these habits, other people in your family still wanting, you know, all these things in the kitchen and all that. And so that's why I put that in the chat. I just wanted him to kind of talk about that part of it so that people can get a like a little insight as to how to start their journey. Thank you. And good to see you again. Pleasure's mine. Uh, listen, the bottom line is this. When you take this journey, in most cases, it's a lonely, lonely journey. Okay. You find out that, well, you find out in a way who really loves you. <laughs> because a lot of times people don't want you coming around because you know, even if you don't say anything, they're thinking, well, I know he's I know he's not in favor of me eating this pork chop that I'm about to eat, but you know, that's what I want to eat. So you learn to I don't I don't throw myself on anyone in terms of if you ask me a question, I'll try to answer it the best I can. And for Thanksgiving, I went over to my sister's house, but I took my food. So, you know, she and her family, they're going to eat the way they, they eat. When, they, when there's a, a, a condition or a problem or anything I can help them out with, obviously I'm more than willing to do that. But you know what? We have to take people by the hand and we have to do it with love and kindness and not really 
um, you know, not really, uh, you shouldn't be eating that, you shouldn't be doing that, that turns people off. You have to do it with love and kindness and, and you know, and make suggestions. And, you know, I'll, I'll never forget my my sister, the same sister, I, mean, I went over to her home on, on Thanksgiving. When she read the book and then she went and she tried some uh, Brussels sprouts for the first time, she tried Brussels sprouts. So after eating her Brussels sprouts, she was like, Oh my God, I love those baby cabbages. So I was like, what baby cabbages? What are you talking about? But she was talking about Brussels sprouts. So again, it's like turning people on to, to, uh, to other, other ways of looking at food and other ways of really looking at your body. And here's my thing. If you're not in pain, if you're not hurting, you're, you're, you're very fortunate, but at the same time, you know, and see, and this is not about being skinny and thin because there's a lot of sick, skinny and thin people. And, you know, and they pass away every day. They have heart problems and other things. And, and why, and why is that? That's why it's important to get that blood work done. That's why it's important to know what's really going on in your body and know what medications you really need and follow your doctor's instructions to the letter. And, you know, so again, it's it's really teaching people with love and kindness and not with, you know, uh, chastising them or saying that, you know, or making them feel like a bad person for consuming something that, you know, that you wouldn't consume, that I wouldn't consume. And see, here it is. See, I can go anywhere. I could go to, uh, and I've done this with some people on this panel and I won't name them, but I, you know, I can go to any restaurant and eat what, and you can eat whatever you want to eat because I'm going to have what I want to eat. And, you know, again, that's why it says a lon lonely journey and you, you know, and it's your journey, but you know, when you look at, and here's a real, what I try to get people to understand, don't take the Daniel diet, make it a Daniel lifestyle. And look how it worked for Daniel in the Bible. Well, thank you so much. Do we have any further questions? So, so Dr. Maxi, um, Dr. Sherrod has her hand up again. Uh, but Dr. Dr. Clark had a comment related to inspiring this lifestyle change. And maybe we can unmute Dr. Clark and she can uh, just get into her question a little bit more. Go ahead. Oh, absolutely. This has been so refreshing and just uh, a joy to hear him speak. Uh, it is a lot of what I do kind of teach in my clinic. I consider myself to be my my patient's partner. And <laughs> so again, you know, it is. Tell Dr. I'm Jordan where you're from, Dr. Clark. I am from Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> so Atlanta. We <laughs> yeah, we'll have to, have to definitely do that. I was out yeah. in L.A. I was out in L.A., but I was like Gladys Knight in the pips. Proved too much for the man, so. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but and, and so, based on what you've said, you know, you're you're, you're so inspiring. So, uh, for the sake of time, if you could, if there's one thing that you could probably tell us, you know, um, as physicians, what we could tell uh, our patients to inspire them to um, to embrace this lifestyle. What do you think that would be? Well, and, I would tell you. I'm sorry, God. I'm Please, sorry. Continue. And then I was actually typing another question really quick. Uh, if you can hang on to that one for a second. Then my sure. second one is how has this lifestyle impacted your mental health? So, oh, wow. <laughs> okay, great. Excellent. Um, you know, I would, I would, I would tell any doctor, please, the first thing you have to do with your patients and not that you don't, but don't give up on them mm -hmm. and be honest with them. OK, because some patients, you know, that losing that 10, 15 pounds could make the biggest difference in the world. And I know that, you know, again, I've spent days in, you know, in Dr. Maxey's office with him and, you know, seeing this steady flow of patients. And I know it gets to be a lot. And I know that, you know, some patients, no matter how you tell them, they may do it and they may not, but I just don't, th I think that, and not suggesting that anyone never gives up on anyone, but I would, that's what I would suggest is just do not give up 
on your patients and tell them the truth. And you know what? And just do it in kindness and love. Because again, I mean, after someone steps on that scale, you know, wow, we need to do something about this. We need to really look into this because have you ever thought about, you know, and again, see, I think it, I think it's important for, you know, doctors to be more aware themselves because it's my understanding and I, I'd never gone to medical school, so I don't know this for a fact, but it's my understanding that dieting is not a big requirement of your studies. Yeah. So I think the more that you learn about it, the better you can communicate it mm-hmm. to, to your patients. And not only that, you know, I, I was assigned this doctor and, you know, and of course you have to go after a certain age, you have to go in every year to get, get an examination. So I went in the first time to meet my doctor and it was this guy that was, you know, like, Two tons of fun. And I was like, dude, I can't listen to anything you got to say because you know what I'm saying? I mean, you could be brilliant, but I can't hear you because, you know, I'm just looking at what I'm looking at, you know? So I, I think that I think that we all have to try to be the example because, you know, one thing I learned from having children, it wasn't what I told them. It was what I showed them, mm. you know? Because we can talk all day long, but the bottom line is that show me what you're talking about. Show me how this is going to work for me. And as far as um, my mental health goes, I believe, and I could be wrong, but I believe I am as sharp today as ever. And, you know, honestly, the way I, the way and only time I really figure out my age is when I have to you know, pull out my driver's license or something like that, because I, I really, I really have no clue, no idea. I mean, I'm, I, you know, I, you know, I don't know if it's genetics or whatever, but I go to bed, I sleep like a baby. I wake up, I feel great and no pain. I don't have to, you know, take any aspirins, any, head, uh, any, anything. And I honestly, I live, I live by my, my food and I live by, you know, just doing I don't prescribe anything I would not do. Let's put it that way. I wouldn't tell you something. And is this is so funny when I, because becoming uh, what first I was a uh, vegetarian, but becoming a vegetarian, you know, over 30 years ago, I would have my staff at the record label. They would follow me around because they wanted to catch me. Cause they're like, (laughs) I know, I know he's having, I know he's going to have some, some chicken somewhere. So they would sneak and follow me around. But of course, they never did, because the whole idea is to get somebody to 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 make a change in their life, a permanent change, not a temporary change, because you can't feel good and say, OK, I'm over that. No, it happened for a reason. And that's why I like to document what's going on in my health, if there is something that's happening. So when I talk to my doctor, we can talk about it. Because I already, I already looked it up. I did all the research I can. Now I want to find out how you can help me with what I know. Because it, realizing, being respectful of the doctor's time, because the doctor has a lot of patients. I get that. So I want to take advantage of my time and say, okay, doc, this is what's been happening. Uh, you know, so what do you think? And, you know, let's have a dialogue. All right. Hey, Dr. Sherrod had a question, I think, Dr. Yes, uh, Dr. Jordan, uh, just one thing concerning oils. And uh-huh. you know, there are always uh, exceptions to the rule. And uh, in general, you do have to be very careful with oils, especially when you're cooking with them because of what you said earlier, you can convert them into really bad oils. But one oil that is very good is the MCT oil, which is actually not to be confused with coconut oil, but is derived from coconut oil and has many benefits for the body and it uh, helps maintain your, uh, it's good for your good cholesterol, yeah. energy, mm-hmm. and also contributes to fat loss. And the other oil that we consume is are the omega-3 oils, which are okay. The omega-3 fatty acids, which are also necessary for a healthy uh, body. So I didn't want to write off all the oils, uh, but just be careful with the ones that you mentioned. and 
know that MCT oil actually uh, support brain health and has been associated with improving uh, memory uh, in the case of dementia and Alzheimer's. Well, Thank I'm you. not I, I'm not going to fall down that rabbit hole because you know when I say what I mean by that you you're absolutely right because the most important thing that anyone can do for themselves is to do their own research. It's not about what I have to say or anything else. You got to do your own research and you have to figure out what's best for you. So I agree with you on that. So 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 Dr. Jordan, one last comment while we're on the um supplements. Um, Dr. Dr. Gibson had a question in the chat about do or how do nutritional supplements um, fit into your uh, personal quest? Well, they're very important uh, because, again, most food today, you're not going to get everything you need from your food. You're just not going to get it. I don't care what diet you're, you're utilizing um, because of the soil. Most so soils are depleted today, and most of the time we don't even know where our food is coming from. And, you know, when you buy something that, you know, that's been on a boat, it's been on a plane, it's been on, 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 on a train, it's been in a, in a truck, by the time it gets to you, you don't know what, even what you have there. So I, I'm a big believer in, in doing the proper supplements. And if you ever give up on, if you ever follow me, follow me, uh, and get off off of a plant, uh, uh, get off of animal products. Then you're going to need to take uh, vitamin B12, because you cannot get vitamin B12 without taking a supplement if you're not eating animals. And you know, here's a here's a real tricky part about that. Animals don't produce it; they eat it. Okay, <laughs> because it's in the soil, it's in the dirt. And that's where they get it from. So, you know, you can cut out the middleman if you want, but take the supplement. It's better for you. <laughs> or eat your dirt, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> so we're getting near the time where we uh, bid our viewers a, a good afternoon. But before we do, are there any of our lay audience, our non physician advisors that are on that have questions or comments? You know, Dr. Uh, Dr. Maxey, uh, Tony Wofford had turned his camera on and back off again. I don't know if he had a, a comment. It's always good to, to hear from him. Mr. Wofford, we'd love to hear you make a comment. If we can get him un unmuted. Or how do Philadelphia people who moved to Florida eat? <laughs> there we go. Oh, we can't we can't get him un unmuted. We can't. There we go. There I am. I'm unmuted now. <laughs> no, okay. I was just I was just going to say that I think this information is very vital and really important. Uh, it's a lot to try to digest because uh, I'm struggling right now in terms of trying to eat and do better in terms of health. But there's so many things out there that just it's it's like almost confusing, if you will. You know, yes. I try yes. to go by simply wholesome. And, and, and it's a, I don't know where you locate, Dr. Jordan, but here in L.A., it's a really nice place, simply wholesome that has a lot. Of, but it's so much to consume. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and I don't get it. I don't I don't receive as much information about natural products and things like that. Because I think for me, the balance between Western medicine and natural herbs and things like that, I think is for me is the biggest the biggest missing link because sometimes we, we how do we how do we work them where they complement one another versus being adversarial if that makes any sense. Well I think I think the number one thing as I said earlier is that you have to really do your own research. And you really have to find out because simple is better. And when I say simple is better, meaning that when you really learn about, you know, learn to really enjoy and love food and its natural state, because see, here's another thing, <coughs> you know, we didn't talk about it today, but it's really better to eat raw food than it is to eat cooked food. And, you know, and here's another, another thing you need to know. See, the raw food is actually already been cooked because the sun cooks it. So when you when you when you grab it and you take something that's that's ripe, 
and it's juicy and it's good. It doesn't get any better than that. Man cannot create that no matter how hard he tries. And anything that God produced doesn't get any better than that. So again, you have to do, you have to, you have to love yourself enough to do the research about you, to figure out you, because we're all different. And Dr. Shirai was right earlier when she was talking about the different oils that may be good for you or what you need or whatever. We're all different. So again, it's not, it's not, you know, it's just not a blank slate for everyone. And, you know, somebody in the chat wanted to know about vitamin D. Now, two things I will guarantee you this. I'll lay money on this. Any person of color is going to have low vitamin D. Okay? Almost any person of color, when you go and you have your vitamin D check, it's going to be low. Because, again, because of your complexion, number one. And number two, the, the amount of time we spend outside, because we don't spend that much time outside. Um, so again, uh, vitamin D is something that we probably all should take. Um, and you know, again, don't be afraid to take your supplements, but pay attention, read those labels as well to know what you're taking. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Walford. And thank you so much, Dr. Jordan. I'd like to just move uh, very briefly after we thank Dr. Jordan and, uh, to a couple of, I think, very important slides. I'm going to slide start with the latest guidelines. And Dr. Jordan, thank you so much. I appreciate your talk today. Uh, Dr. Neighbor Stevens, Dr. Walsh, any final words for Dr. Jordan? Uh, I, I have a final word for Dr. Jordan. Dr. Jordan, I really appreciate the way that you um, put together what you presented today. Um, there was there there was a little bit of dismissiveness though about about comfort food. They are <laughs> they they and so we we we're gonna have to have you back to talk about you know sometimes you just need that whatever. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, comfort, comfort, comfort is what you make it. Okay, comfort <laughs> is not what you remember. Okay, <laughs> okay, comfort is what you make it. Comfort to me, comfort food is what's good for my body and good for me. So I wake up the next day feeling all right. All right, I love it because it's just like it's just like everybody sits around and eat all this turkey, right, and everything else, and then they, what they have to do? They got to fall asleep. Okay, <laughs> food's not supposed to do that for you. Food's supposed to give you energy. It's not supposed to knock you out. I love it. <laughs> What about Southern comfort? <laughs> <laughs> put some put some um, Hennessy in it or something. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, Dr. Maxi, uh, let me just say this before before I jump off. I put my. Ahead, you're welcome to say. We only got about ten more minutes. Okay, but I put my email address in my website address in the chat for anyone that wants it. Okay. Dr. Neighbor Stevens, I think that. The more we talk about what we eat and how we eat, the better in the end we'll all be. So I look forward to continuing this conversation. Well, good, good. I'm trying to get to my slides. I have to turn them the color so I can read them. That's why I always ask Dr. Walks to help me out. Dr. Maxi, you know I, I'm, I'm never shy about talking. I'm happy to read the slide. <laughs> okay, let me, let me go ahead. Latest guidelines for COVID-19. Uh, the first bullet is if you or your family member are at high risk for severe illness, wear a mask or respirator with greater protection in public indoor spaces. If you are in an area with a high COVID-19 community level, Talk with your healthcare provider about wearing a mask in a medium COVID-19 community level area. Second bullet, if you test positive and you are an older adult or someone who is at high risk of getting very sick from COVID-19, treatment is available. Contact a healthcare provider right away after a positive test to determine if you are eligible, even if your symptoms are mild right now or at that moment. You can also visit a test to treat location and if eligible, receive a prescription from a provider. Don't delay, 
treatment must be started within the first few days to be effective. Okay, so a lot of people have started to relax, but we know that this virus and other infections are still out there. So these are new guidelines that are current, and I want to make sure everybody got a chance to see them. Uh, you can go to the next slide. Next slide. Latest guidelines for COVID-19. Bullet one, staying up to date with COVID-19 vaccines, getting doses of Shield if eligible, and following preventive measures for COVID-19 are important. Second bullet. This is especially important if you are older or have severe health conditions or more than one health condition, including those listed below. Uh, next bullet, approved and authorized COVID-19 vaccines, primary series and booster are safe and effective. And the last bullet on this slide, some people who are immunocompromised or people with weakened immune systems may be eligible for an additional primary dose of COVID-19 vaccine. So we've got a couple of infectious disease doctors on the phone, I mean, on the call. So my understanding is that the uh, people should continue their vaccines on an appropriate schedule, that we should get the, uh, the new vaccine that covers all the COVID subvariants and continue the boosters. And uh, I know the Evo Shield is something that if you don't have good immunity, it will provide immunity for you. We know that people who are immunocompromised, people with diabetes, kidney failure, some forms of cancer and liver disease, they get about half the immunity from a booster as normal people. So you should check with your primary care doctor and find out what type of booster, what type of uh, vaccination you should have. Any questions about that? You want to comment on that, Dr. W Dr. Walks or Dr. Stevens? Dr. Sherrod, Dr. Jordan? No, Dr. Maxey, I'm good. Okay, is there another slide? Is there another slide? Oh, this there, the, the previous slide mentioned medical conditions that were vulnerable to COVID-19, and here's that list. Diabetes, type one and two, heart disease, AFib, lung disease, asthma, COPD, pulmonary embolism, kidney disease, liver disease, disabilities such as Down syndrome, spinal cord, def uh, dis uh, I think it's defects, uh, birth de other birth defects, uh, ADHD, dementia, cancer. Uh, basically, I think anything that could be wrong with you could put you at higher risk either because your systems are compromised or because maybe your ability to care for yourself may be compromised. Okay. It's interesting that even mental disease, decreased cognition, uh, Down syndrome, spinal cord disease, all those can put you at more risk uh, for uh, being harmed by COVID and actually any other type of viral or bacterial infection. So, I like Dr. Jordan's mantra, always have a primary care doctor and somebody you can have a relationship and talk to them about what your issues are. And if they can't talk to you, you need to find somebody else. That's what I believe. So, so, so Dr. Uh, Dr. Maxey, uh, Tony Wofford put his hand up again. Um, if we could unmute him uh, for a very brief comment. Yeah, I want to say one, is it possible for you guys to do like a, 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 a weekly, like a blast update? And the reason I say that, because I read the LA Times every day to find out what's going on, but I also cross reference with the Los Angeles Sentinel and other black newspapers to find out the truth about what I read in the LA Times. And the beauty of this particular Zoom that you guys host every week that I try to get on every week is I, I see and I read and I hear but I also see and read and watch you guys to find out actually what makes sense because we have found a certain level of comfort when, when people look like us talk about the different disease states and you guys make it a little more plain 
than, than, than folk that's not of this culture. And I think it's going to be very important because everything you just said was important. And just like when the first thing you said about the, the latest protocols and updates and things like that, it's more palatable when you hear it because the Black Brain tr Health Trust is wonderful. But I think in the, we need space in, in, in black newspapers across the country. And I wish somebody would even talk to someone like, like you know, Ben Chavis is now the president of, of National Black Newspaper Association. And he could get that, if we create, if you guys create a, a, a language and a logic of how we broach these conversations, then he could get in all the black newspapers because contrary to popular belief, black people still read black newspapers. Uh, they read those black church papers and things like that. That is what's going to help, help help us to rescue and reconstruct ourselves as a people much more than just a PSA at 12 o'clock at night and things like that. So I would have encouraged you because because the wealth of information that I get from listening to you guys is is is, is unmatched. Well, thank you, Mr. Barber. Uh, in you terms of understanding yourself. health, I would really encourage you. So you come by the office, I'm going to feed you a a lunch with uh, portobello uh, mushroom barbecue so we can talk about how to do what you said. We're very interested. Okay, and I'll put some chicken wings in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, final words, Dr. Wallace and Dr. I love it. And I love it. Uh, uh, Dr. Maxi, uh, Dr. Dr. Clark put her hand up. I know we're getting near the end. But... Okay, go ahead, Dr. Clark. Yeah, so with these new guidelines, you know, what about testing for antibody bodies? I still feel like maybe there should be some due diligence in that before we just, you know, head out and take the, um, you know, other remedies and uh, so therefore and so on. So what's your thoughts about that? Anybody can chime in. Uh, so so let me let me let me let me say this, Dr. Clark. I think that that it is absolutely uh, useful to have information. And so testing for antibodies, I was thinking a similar thing earlier as we talked about vitamins and supplements and, and, and testing. Um, I agree with Dr. Jordan that probably most of us are vitamin D deficient. At the same time, we can test and we can find out. So knowing, going back to Dr. Wilbur Jordan and his advice about having a PCP with whom you have a relationship, it just makes sense to have somebody who knows you and who can advise you about when to go get tested. And depending on communities and resources and how much things cost and all of that, it can be challenging to give blanket recommendations about what people ought to go out and do. What we try to do on the Black Health Trust with respect to COVID-19 and vaccines and what have you is follow the CDC guidelines and then look at how we may need to make additional recommendations based on what may be happening in our, in our community. But, I will, I will never say, no, don't go find that out. Absolutely, much to what uh, Dr. Uh, James Jazzy Jordan was saying, absolutely do your own research and find out what's best for you. And as Dr. Wilbur Jordan was saying, check it with your PCP. <laughs> Can I take issue with one thing Dr. Dr. Uh, James Jazzy Jordan said today, Dr. Maxey? Sure you can, Dr. Walks. You're gonna do Maybe it. Dr. Jordan, the only doctor in your community has had too many chicken wings in his pocket. I would like to speak out for, for, for the doctors who are going to come in and say, do as I say, not as I do. Because sometimes, you know what? I'm going to just stop right there. I'm with you, man. It's hard for me to look at you and take advice from you when, when clearly you're not taking your own advice. I, so I'm, I'm going to stop. Go ahead, Dr. Max. <laughs> Is that your last word or you, you want to give another thought? I have I have I have one other one other thought that that I wanted to share, Dr. Maxey. Um, seriously, we are we are talking about something that is so very important. I think that it's always important when we talk about motivation and lifestyle change and taking what we learn and putting it into what we do, that we recognize some of these things are very challenging, given the other stuff we're carrying around in our brains, right? Many of us are struggling with so many life circumstances, so many disparities in our communities that when you tell me that it's really important that I eat this way or I do this or that, I, I think we have to recognize that this is a struggle and that's why we have to continue. And as Dr. James Jazzy Jordan said earlier today, we can't give up on anybody. As long as I'm still alive, I can have hypertension, diabetes, pulmonary issues and everything else and I can eat healthier, and I can begin 
with my doctor's advice to exercise appropriately. So I just want us to remember that as long as we can draw breath and say a prayer, there's an opportunity for us to live a better life. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Walsh. Dr. Neva Stevens. My closing thought is I want to remind everyone about something we've talked about in the past, which is COVID is a new entity and we're learning all the time. And what we know to be true today may be altered or not true in the future. Same thing about the vitamins and just about everything we've talked about today. So it is so important that we try to stay current with what um, research has shown. The COVID situation is very fluid. There is concern about what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks, and then again, a couple of weeks after Christmas. Please stay tuned to what's going on in your community. There are new variants that are beginning to predominate in certain areas. And that's going to, we know that's going to happen. And it's, it may affect what, what steps you need to take. We here at Black Health Trust will do our very best to keep you abreast of new developments, but don't be offended or put off by new information. I promise you, there's going to be new information. Well, thank you so much. Uh, before I have Dr. Jazzy Jordan say his final words, I remind people, it's been on my heart about the effect of diabetes on your kidneys. And I'm a dialysis doctor, and I know that nobody wants to be on dialysis. For, for those of you who have high blood pressure and have diabetes, I, I want Simon, can you put my phone number, my cell phone number in the chat? 310-686-8490. I asked you a week ago to ask your doctor, your primary care doctor, to give you a urine albumin to creatinine ratio and discuss it with them. And for those of you who can't discuss it with them, call me. I want you to have my number so we can talk of how this simple test can tell us something we can do and help you. Uh, Dr. Jazzy Jordan. I would just like for you guys to invite me back. I have really enjoyed this. I look forward to talking to you guys again. It's really a beautiful thing when we can uh, come together and really discuss matters that are really important for our community because you know, we have to reach one and teach one. And here's another thing, one, one other thing for, for you doctors with your practices. Any opportunities you have to, you know, perhaps put up, have a cooking class, a healthy cooking class that, you know, you can invite your patients to and people can learn. Because, see, another important factor in all this is the taste. Because I can show you pictures all day of stuff I, I create. But unless you can taste it, you're like, okay, that looks good, but I don't know how it tastes. And that's what really, that's the key. Because if you can get people tasting good food and it's great for you, for them, they're like, I'm in all day long, you know? And here's one other thing I did not see on the slide, but um, I think there's one thing that was missing and maybe it was there and I didn't, I missed it. And that is your overall health. Because if you if you are if your immune system is strong and your uh, your vitals are good and your weight is under control, I think you have a better chance of fighting anything. Right. And and I'm out. You're right. Yeah. Well, thank everybody so much for joining us on this uh, wonderful after Thanksgiving Sunday afternoon. Please be safe and be healthy. We'll see you next Sunday. Simon, thanks a lot. Thanks, Have Simon. a good day. Thank you all. Day, all right. Bye. God bless. Bye. Bye.
Thank you.